guys, is this reputation that they're preparing for these guys or reality that these guys impact the game differently? So, Stefan Diggs, rep versus reality. Defense coordinators sit down and ask, what are we going to do with Stefan Diggs, Key? It's reality. They, they start that process before they even get to Monday. They start that immediately after the game before because Stefan Diggs is certainly one of the top flight wide receivers in the league. That's reality to me, just knowing how Josh Allen plays and how they air the ball out. Stephon Diggs is that guy. Yeah, I would say, as Jay said, particularly with who's throwing him the ball, that's reality. All right, how about Tyreek Hill? We got a new king. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, Josh Allen. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. It's my boy, Blue. <laughs> I'm such a dork. <laughs> oh, I don't even know what to say. Uh, but Josh Allen is the best quarterback in the NFL right now. There's no doubt. He is the guy that I would take right off the bat. No one has asked more to, to do more for their team or carry their team more on a weekly basis than Josh Allen. Again, out of the top four quarterbacks we're talking about here, definitely the least talent around him. No doubt about it. It's, it's not even close, everybody. All right? You talk about the physical ability, it's arguably the best. It's the strongest arm in football. Him and Herbert and Mahomes are the strongest arms in the game. And I think when you really ask somebody to just throw it, all right, if the pocket was clean and you said, okay, let's throw it as hard as we can, Herbert and Allen to me would be really close and interesting. But Allen, when things are awkward or like I got to move and then set up my feet real quick, he can still throw it extremely hard where I feel like the other guys maybe lose just a little bit. So it's the best arm in football, you know, especially most dynamic maybe that way too, all right? Then you go, oh, wait, the other part of the skill set. I didn't even get into this with Mahomes because he's a great runner too, a great scrambler. We talked about the pocket thing. But Allen, other than Lamar Jackson, is the best running quarterback in football. There's, this, I don't even think that's debatable. Again, Kyler Murray, I know, maybe more electric. You're not asking Kyler Murray to run over the middle linebacker on third and two like they asked Josh Allen to do like six times a game. And then they get in the goal line, and they're like, you know, we can't really run with our running back, so you be the running back, and you just get in there. I mean, nobody. And then, like we talked about with the talent around him, again, Stephon Diggs is the man. We know that. Gabriel Davis is good. Everybody's got the last game of the year a little too in their head, and now they put him in the top 10 wide receiver conversation. And it's like, no, no, he caught 500 yards of balls last year. He was fourth on his own team. So calm down with, like, they got this amazing weaponry. I like him. Again, Cole Beasley, bye. Out of there. Didn't really matter last year. Emmanuel Sanders, going to be on a new team, still a free agent at this point. So how great do you think he was that nobody still has assigned him, right? So that's, again, where don't just look at the stats and all of that because the stats, you're not, you're, you're not going to look at him and go, well, he's the best quarterback in football, the stats. But his effect on the game, his own team, there's no greater – and then with the physical ability, it's, it's the most physically gifted quarterback in the game right now, too. Nobody does more with less. Is that how you would say it? Because I, I think it's a great way you describe Tom Brady. Thank you. When you did the rankings with thank Paul. You. The saying other nobody day. can do more with more. No one does more with more. Right. Like you give Brady a, a cast around him, he will he's going to take him up. higher than anyone else would. Exactly. But Josh Allen can do it with anyone. With limited. You know, it's, it's where, like, the vice versa, that'd be go, put Tom Brady in Buffalo or in Cincinnati and tell me how that's going to go there, right? And that's where, you know, these guys are special that way. And that's not a knock on Brady. It's just that that's the way it is. But, yes, I think that's, you know, again, it's, 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 it's they've based the organization, like Mahomes in Kansas City, and just going, we're playing through our quarterback. And we'll even adjust the way we play defense. And we're just going to attack you with this guy. And we're never going to let off the gas pedal. It's just going to be Josh Allen to the right, Josh Allen to the left, laser down the middle, laser down the sideline. And to me, where he separates from Mahomes a little bit right now is he can play within the offense a little bit more consistently than Mahomes. You know, where we talked about where I go, Mahomes, it's just a little too greedy at times, looking for the big play, looking for the splash play. Why we leave in the pocket? We don't have to. I don't come away with Josh Allen and doing that. When the pocket's good, the big fucker will just stand there all day and go, I'm here. But he's got a great sense of going, okay, it's nobody's open or it's getting a little hairy. Now it's time for backyard football. And within the pocket, he moves the right spots there too. 
So that's where he's really good. And to me, you know, again, he's a big arm quarterback to where he can get greedy at times. But I honestly think he was – He's less greedy than Herbert or Mahomes and sometimes just going, oh, I'm going to jam it in there. You know, like I said, he'll, okay, the first guy wasn't open. Let me guy, guy over the middle, number two, number three, read, boom, blah, blah, blah. So to me, he's really good in that area too. His weakness is, yes, throwing the ball too hard at times. There's too many balls where I go, damn, he's, he's six feet from you. Just throw it slow, slow it down a little bit. Or, and he goes, I did. Yeah, I knew I he like, probably well, did. I know, right? You gotta, still got to go slower. Yeah. <laughs> like three more notches down. Uh, that would be the thing, you know, I would say a little bit. That, you know, maybe too many hits at times are the things that scare me. But, man, you know, really, it's, it's just, this is a guy that's been playing really high-level football for the last two seasons. He rivaled Mahomes even in the 2020 season, and I think this year is the year he he passed him up just slightly. With again, what I'm saying is being more consistent. You know, the ability with the legs. I think a hair better decision maker right now. And then the wow and splash plays are right there with Mahomes. It's it's right there, and uh, that, that's not that's saying a lot because again, Mahomes is already an all time great, and I think Josh Allen is starting to go into that area too. You had Josh Allen at number two last year. You had him at eighteen in twenty twenty, and you liked him. I him liked so him. But so this is again another example of like you know early in the career, I didn't give enough of these guys the boost of there's gonna be growth here, you know. Uh, and 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 I think he's another one of those guys where I look at to go. I didn't bump him up when I knew the potential and everything, and the guy works hard and all that. Like it's gonna go up. Don't be so scared, even though it's like not a proven thing yet. You knew I knew he was better than that, and that's what I've tried to learn this year a little bit. We'll see. I'm even scared with some of the second year, like the Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson and Justin Fields category, because their potential is better than the low twenties. And that's, you know, again, they could be a huge jump next year. But, yes, Allen is is amazing. He really is. And to tell you how amazing he is, again, the leadership, the effect on the team, all that good. But McDermott's a defensive coach. Yes. And has gone to the dark side and gone, let's throw it every play. Let's just let it loose, this guy. <laughs> because he sees the guy every day in practice and goes, how could we not attack through this guy? He's trustworthy and he's unbelievable. And – he can, like Mahomes, can almost win games single-handedly. Like, the game I'll go back to last year, act, the, there's two of them, actually. You know I mean, again, what he did in the Kansas City game and the loss was, was through the roof good. But nobody does what he did to New England in the playoffs. We've never seen anybody do that to Bill Belichick. Like, nobody. Like, what did they score? What they end 47? Up 47. And took the foot off the gas? And, like... What, threw for 80% and ran on them and did it all? But to me, the game that jumps out even more is the Week 16 game against the Patriots where their game plan was perfect. And then you break that game down and you go, the Patriots should have won the game. Allen just made like eight or nine plays where you go, whoa, the coverage is perfect. They had him in the backfield. He escaped. And then made some amazing play. And you go, damn, the Patriots called the perfect defense and really executed really well. And they just couldn't overcome the guy. And I think that's when you saw Bill Belichick start to go, oh, shit, this guy's absolutely amazing. Right. But, yes, he can carry a team single-handedly. And, again, without, like, top-tier talent compared to the top four. Bills are the favorite to come out of the AFC, according to Caesar Sportsbook. But, uh, RC, Josh Allen has a new O.C., and Ken Dorsey. So how challenging will that change be for mm -hmm. Allen and Buffalo's offense here, considering what's at stake and the future and the pressure and the expectations? Well, the one thing the Buffalo Bills did was reward their people. Josh Allen uh, off season ago. Now Stefan Diggs. You also go out and you draft James Cook from the Georgia Bulldogs to bolster a running game that would have been very important down the stretch against the Kansas City Chiefs in the playoffs. And now Ken Dorsey has to keep the train moving forward. It's not about changing everything or trying to reinvent the wheel. It's doing the small things to help Josh Allen continue to progress and this offense diversify. We saw this offense be absolutely phenomenal in the playoffs and only miss one thing, which is being able 
able to control the football late in the game. I think they've added that to their game. They understand how important it is. And I expect this team to be in the AFC Championship late in January to be playing for a chance to go to the Super you Bowl. You talk about all the offensive stability that they have. Let's not forget, too, they add Von Miller on the defensive side as well, thinking Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, they open yeah, up the absolutely. season uh, against the defending champs, those Rams on Thursday night football, September 8th. RC, appreciate you. Let's go to Shea. As it currently the gives Herbert. them just over, yeah, the Herbert, an 11% chance to come out of the AFC and reach the Super Bowl. That's the second highest mark in the conference after the Bills, who boast a 13% chance to make the Super Bowl per FPI. Now, the Bills haven't reached a Super Bowl since 1993, but there's certainly plenty of optimism right now in Buffalo. Listen to this. Are the, are the Bills the best team in the AFC, Key? I don't think that they are. Oh. I, I think that they are one of a handful of teams that are at the top. I don't separate them from Kansas City or Baltimore. For that matter, I don't separate them against Indianapolis. Indianapolis went to Buffalo and took them to the woodshed, and I know that was a year ago. I understand all of those things. Look, the way that I look at things, they were an 11-6 football team last year. They opened up losing to Pittsburgh and Ben Roethlisberger. Then they got their stuff together, and eventually they lose to Jacksonville. They had a tough loss against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in overtime. And so when you start to think about this football team, they're really good with Josh Allen. There's no question about it. He is on his way. But when you lose an offensive coordinator – who predominantly has been in your ear mm -hmm. in Brian Dable to the New York Giants. He's been in your ear over the last couple of years and somebody else is now calling plays. It's going to be different. It's not going to be all rosy. And I think people out there really think that because Josh Allen is somewhat of a veteran quarterback that they just go take right off and start where they stop. I mean, start where they finish that. And that's not necessarily the case. All right. So the Bills are the team to beat in the AFC. Uh -oh. uh, again, because of the <laughs> roster that they have. <laughs> Put together. The AFC's loaded. There's no doubt about it. I, I think that the Bills are the team to beat because if you look at defensively, I think today in, in modern NFL football, to be an elite defense, which the Bills are, your back seven, meaning your linebacker or nickelback and secondary crew, has to have five cats that can flat out cover. Yeah. And with their two safeties, with their nickel Teron Johnson, with your Davius White and Kyer Elam, their draft pick out of Florida there, they got five cats that can cover. The second thing is you have to have linebackers that can play coverage. Matt Milano, one of the best covering linebackers because of the way teams use tailbacks and tight ends in the pass game. You have to have it. And then you have to have at least two elite rushers. I don't care where they are, but as an offensive person, if you've got an edge rusher and an inside cat, I got issues. Hmm. The Bills have that. And then I think offensively, there's many different ways to be really good offensively in the NFL. One of my favorite ways is the way that the Bills are built is they can be really um, game plan specific with their matchups. I could give you seven names on this offense mm -hmm. that can create problems for defenses. We're going to say Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis, Davis, Jamison Crowder, the two tight ends, Knox and O.J. Howard, and then their tailbacks and Singletary and their draft pick, James Cook. Those are seven guys that if they want to line up and put two tight ends in the field and play smash them out football, they can. If they want to spread you out and throw it all over the place, and you got to remember, Laura, Key, Key knows this as well. Those fourth and fifth options in the pass game – are going to be matched up against lesser players. It's very New Englandish from hmm. 10, 15 years ago. They're going to get a Jamison Crowder on a fifth corner, and then he's going to be able to the guy that wins a lot. I just think they're built in such a unique way and, and solid way. Yeah. They're the team to beat. It's not just depth. It's valuable depth that can yeah. be interchanged when you need it to be. It's a really good point. Also, one of my favorite things about Keyshawn is it takes so much to impress him. Like, nothing impresses Keyshawn. Nothing. Key, Key, I didn't there, say I wasn't Key. impressed. They're kind I of good, you know, maybe I'm might be okay. I'm just not buying into the hype. I love hype. it, Keith. Keith, stay there. That's all what does great. this team need to do for you to buy into the hype other than you played for the Jets? What do <laughs> they well, need well, go, to go, do? Here, here, here's what I would tell you, Buttercup. Go on the road and win a game in the playoffs. There we go. Go on the road and win a game in the playoffs. All right, Buttercup or a